What do we need to survive? Breathe, rest, drink, and eat. And we cannot eat without plants. We humans eat them. So for us, it's really important that plants can produce and grow efficiently. But there's something that can reduce drastically their efficiency. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, let's recall a few things. Photosynthesis. You probably heard this name a million times by now. So here's just what you need to know for the purpose of this video. The process has two phases. In the first light-dependent phase, the plant uses energy from the sun to produce chemical energy. The second one, in which we'll focus, is the Calvin cycle. Here, the plant uses the chemical energy previously stored to produce organic compounds like glucose. It does this by using carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, in a process called carbon fixation. Then, the cycle repeats over and over again. The problem in this seemingly perfect process is Rubisco, the enzyme responsible for binding the CO2 and beginning the Colvin cycle. This enzyme, the molecular equivalent of a colorblind apple picker, has an affiliation for both CO2 and oxygen and performs the Colvin cycle with either. If there is more CO2 than oxygen in the cell, regular photosynthesis will occur. Otherwise, Rubisco will use oxygen and waste carbon instead of incorporating it in the cell, a process called photorespiration. This leads to a waste of energy and matter that harms the plant growth. The amount of carbon dioxide and oxygen inside a plant is regulated by leaf pores, the stomata. To reduce water loss by evaporation, in hot and dry climates, the plant may close its stomata, preventing CO2 to enter and increasing photorespiration rates. Also, in environments with low carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere, photorespiration will increase. Thus, some plants adapted to hot and dry environments have developed mechanisms to avoid photorespiration. Basically, they use an intermediate carbon receptor that doesn't have an affinity for oxygen. In doing this, they increase the amount of CO2 available for Rubisco, and therefore it is able to perform the regular Colvin cycle. Because the primary product of this type of carbon fixation is a 4-carbon compound, instead of the 3 carbon product of Rubisco, we call this C4 metabolism. Some plants with this type of metabolism separate the two stages of photosynthesis in two different types of cells. The light phase occurs in the mesophyll cells, closer to the leaf surface, as well as the carbon fixation by a non-oxygen bonding enzyme. The resulting four carbon molecules then travel to the bundle sheath cells. Here, they are converted back to CO2 and combined to Rubisco, starting the normal Calvin cycle. Another type of plants use a different pathway, CAM. They use the same intermediate carbon receptor as C4 plants, but instead of separating the stages of photosynthesis in space, they separate them in time. At night occurs the carbon fixation, and during daylight, the CO2 is released near Rubisco, allowing normal photosynthesis to happen. Each photosynthetic pathway makes plants more adaptive to a specific environment. Normal C3 plants uh, are more efficient in wet places with high CO2 concentrations. C4 grow better in hot and sunny environments, and camp plants are designed to avoid water loss in arid zones. What if these conditions are subject to changes. What will happen to these plants? Biosphere exists as a whole, and everything there from the smallest molecule to the largest ecosystem is closely connected. So it's difficult to predict the outcome of climate change in plants and the way it will affect our food supplies. What can we do to avoid these effects? Fight for sustainability. Meanwhile, there's still much to discover.